Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting exam oriented topic extramedullary lesions versus intramedullary lesions. So it's going to be a very important exam oriented topic. Extramedullary lesions and intramedullary lesions. Here we go. This is the cross section of the spinal cord. To understand the intramedullary versus extramedullary lesions, we need to understand three concepts. But before that, let's see the cross section of the spinal cord. The inner part of the spinal cord is the grey matter, where the anterior horn cells and the nuclei reside. The outside part is the white matter. So the spinal cord contains inner grey matter which contains nuclei and outer white matter which contains tracts. We have the posterior column tract which carries position joint vibration sense. We have the corticospinal tract which is responsible for movements and we have the spinothalamic tract which carries pain and temperature sensation. So the inner part of the spinal cord is the grey matter and the outer part is the white matter. Why I am stressing so much on the grey matter and the white matter is that in the intramedullary lesion that means the one the ones which start within the spinal cord and start expanding outwards is known as intramedullary lesions. So the, those disorders which start inside the spinal cord that is the grey matter and start expanding outwards we call that as intramedullary lesions and those which are outside and start coming inside hitting the white matter first and then after a later point of time grey matter are the extramedullary lesions. So very interesting point where we need to understand the concept is that the intramedullary lesions start within the spinal cord and they affect the grey matter. They affect the grey matter that is the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. Example, syringomyelia. Whereas extramedullary lesions, they affect the white matter. Extramedullary lesions affect the white matter. It can affect the posterior column and can cause Lehermann sign. It can affect the corticospinal tract causing UMN signs. So, intramedullary lesions first affect the grey matter causing the anterior horn cell disorders. Manifestation of the anterior horn cell like wasting example syringomyelia. Extramedullary lesions affect the white matter posterior column or corticospinal tract. And therefore, they, they cause Lehermet sign and UMN signs, very important. Intramedullary, grey matter first involved. Extramedullary, early involvement of white matter, very, very important. The second concept, what we need to know is the spinothalamic tract, which carries pain and temperature sensations, traverses the center of the spinal cord and then goes. So, the spinothalamic tract traverses the spinal cord and then goes. I said, as I said, intramedullary lesion affects the grey matter first. And therefore, since a tract traverses the grey matter, the spinothalamic tract is predominantly involved in intramedullary lesion. That means the sensations carried by spinothalamic tract are affected. Pain and temperature are affected, but sensations carried by posterior column are spared. That is touch position joint vibrations are spared. So this is known as dissociated sensory loss. Dissociation means going away. Associations means coming together. So the second concept is that intramedullary lesions produces dissociated sensory loss. And the third important concept one needs to know is that the arrangement of fibers in the spinothalamic tract, what we call as lamination. 
So here if we see the outside is the sacral fibers followed by lumbar then medially thoracic most medial is cervical. So outermost is sacral then lumbar then thoracic then the medial most is cervical. So intramedullary lesion when it starts within the grey matter and then goes outside it hits the cervical then thoracic then lumbar and the last is the sacral. So there is sacral sparing in an intramedullary lesion and since cervical then thoracic then lumbar then sacral are affected it is a descending type of sensory loss. So intramedullary lesion causes sacral sparing sacral sensations are spared and it is a descending type of sensory loss as the lesion starts expanding first cervical then thoracic then lumbar then sacral gets affected and therefore this is a descending type of sensory loss whereas if it's an extramedial lesion which comes from outside and hits the first fibers to get affected is the sacral fibers because they are placed lateral most so the sacral sensory loss is the first finding of an extramedial lesion First sacral is affected, then lumbar, then thoracic, then cervical. So it is an ascending type of sensory loss, ascending type of parasitias. So these three are very, very important concepts. Once we understand these three concepts, it is easy to understand the differences between intramedullary and extramedullary lesion. So intramedullary lesion, classic example, syringomyelia, affects the gray matter first, anterior homicides, and therefore you see wasting in syringomyelia. Whereas an extra lesion like epidural abscess affects the white matters first since they are placed outwards like posterior column being affected causing Lehermet sign, corticospinal tract being affected causing UMN sign especially spasticity. Then the spinothalamic tract traverses the grey matter and then goes and therefore spinothalamic tract gets affected in intra lesions example dissociated sensory loss that is a pain and temperature carried by spinothalamic tract is affected but sensations carried by posterior column namely touch position vibration sense are spared and the third important point is that intramural lesion as it affects the spinothalamic tract since the sacral fibers are placed laterally there is sacral sparing and then it is a descending type of parasitia cervical thoracic lumbar sacral Whereas if it's an extra lesion, sacral fibers are the first to get affected. So sacral sensory loss is there and then it is sacral lumbar thoracic. It is an ascending type of parasitias. These three are important concepts. Once we understand these three concepts, understanding the differences between intramedullary and extramedullary lesions are easy. So now let's see the differences between intramedullary and extramedullary lesions. So intramedullary lesion, the classic example is syringomyelia, where there is a development level where there is a cavity in the center of the spinal canal. Extra medullary, the classic example is epidural abscess. Abscess coming from outside and hitting the spinal cord. So the three main differences between intra lesion and extra lesions could be put under the subtitles motor, sensory and sphincter disturbances. Motor, sensory and sphincter disturbances. First, let's see the motor disturbances. As I said, intramedullary lesions first affect the anterior tonsils, the grey matter, because the grey matter are inside. So, intramedullary lesion first affects the inside matter, that is the grey matter. So, anterior tonsils are affected. There is severe wasting. Classic example, syringomyelia. UMN signs are affected later. Whereas, in an extramedullary lesion, the first thing to get affected is corticospinal tract example epidural abscess so corticospinal tract lesions gets affect causes the corticospinal tract gets affected so it causes spasticity so intramural lesion causes lower motor neuron weakness extra lesion causes upper motor neuron weakness this is about motor now let's see sensory here in intramural lesion there is only funicular type of pain a dull boring type of pain Whereas an extra medial lesion, since the posterior roots enter via the dorsal horn and then enters the posterior grey column, the dorsal roots get affected, so they'll have a radicular type of pain. So in an intra medial lesion, the pain is a funicular type of pain, dull, boring type of pain. Whereas an extra medial lesion, it is a radicular type of pain. 
intramural lesion it produces a dissociated sensory loss pain and temperature are affected because spinal thalamic tract which traverses the spinal cord are affected so it causes dissociated sensory loss pain and temperature affected by spinal thalamic tract are affected but sensations kept by posterior column touch position joint vibration sense are spared so dissociated sensory loss is seen in intramural lesion example syrinx whereas dissociated sensory loss is not seen in extra medullary lesion sacral sensations sacral sensations the lamination is the sacral sensations are placed laterally so in an extra medullary lesion the sacral sensory loss is the first whereas in intra medullary lesion there is sacral sparing the joint vibrations and posterior position posterior column is in the white matter so extra medullary lesion first affects the white matter whereas intra medullary lesion affects the inner gray matter so in an extra medullary lesion the posterior column are affected whereas in intra medullary lesion they are affected very late and since the posterior column are affected in an extra medullary lesion it produces a characteristic lehermet sign what is lehermet sign when we bend our head there will be electric shock like sensations going down the spine it is because of the involvement of the posterior column so in extra medullary lesion you find lehermet sign because of the posterior column involvement whereas an intra medullary lesion will affect only the gray matter and therefore does not affect the posterior column or produce lehermet sign and then finally the autonomic disturbance sphincter disturbances the bubble disturbance the bladder disturbances are seen early in an intra medullary lesion whereas the sphincter disturbances are seen late in the extra medullary lesion so sphincter disturbances are seen early in the intra medullary lesions and sphincter disturbances are seen late in the extra medullary lesions so if we understand these three important concepts we can make out the differences between intra medullary and extra medullary lesions and can approach a person having a spinal cord lesion confidently by categorizing uh, by compartmentalizing into three particular categories one motor involvement second sensory involvement third blood involvement so if we go systematically we can clinch the diagnosis clinically this is a very very important topic especially an exam oriented topic one of the favorite questions asked by the examiners so if we can understand all these concepts understanding the difference between extra medullary and intra medullary lesion becomes very very easy i hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture as much as i enjoyed delivering it if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel but please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts and my happy page dr srinivas concepts thank you bye